I'll give you an update on the officer involved shooting that occurred Thursday evening. It was around 7.53 p.m. in the 500 block of East Colfax. You're probably most familiar with the McDonald's and the 7-Eleven that are in that block, and that's the area where this happened. So during our investigation, we've learned that the clerk from the 7-Eleven store, the address of the store is 551 East Colfax, he was outside smoking, and he asked the customers who came up to go in if they would wait till they finished a cigarette because he was working by himself. And people were obliging his request, and then a mail came up and ignored his request and went in the store. The clerk follows him in, and as he goes to say something to this male, this male who we now know as our suspect pulls out a gun. The clerk runs out of the store. Uh, as he's outside waiting, he sees a Denver police car driving by, and he flags him down frantically and says, hey, 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 these two officers get out. The clerk says, hey, there's a guy in the store with a gun. In fact, that's him right now. He's going, there he is, there he is. And the officers can see a male walking eastbound on Colfax on the sidewalk, and he's carrying a big black box under his right arm. It's the cash register drawer. So the officers immediately go after the suspect, and as they run towards him, the suspect turns and starts to fire his gun. One of the officers returned fire. Um, the officer who returned fire was injured by one of the suspect's bullets. That officer was able to uh, hit the suspect with gunfire, and the suspect went down. So while they're waiting for cover officers to come in and help with the suspect, the injured officer said, tells his partner, hey, hey, I'm hurt, hey, I'm hurt. Uh, so his partner puts the tourniquet on his leg while they're waiting for cover officers. Once the other officers come in, they take control of the suspect. At that point, we located two other citizens who had been injured by gunfire. Uh, both were taken to hospitals for their injuries. One received a, a graze wound and was able to be treated and released. The other one had a little more serious injury that required surgery and some ongoing hospitalization. Like I said, the one officer who was shot, he was shot in the thigh. Uh, it was a... Fortunately, uh, not a terrible wound. He was treated and released after a few hours. He's got some recovery time ahead of him, but he should recover um, very, very well. We've identified the suspect as Carnell Nelson. That's C-A-R-N-E-L-L, -L, Nelson, N-E-L-S-O-N. -L and his date of birth is 228 of 89. He did die from his injuries at the hospital. We did recover a gun that the suspect had in his possession at the scene. We also interviewed several witnesses. We thanked them for their cooperation in the investigation. It took a while to get through everybody. And I think it's important to note that the clerk from the 7-Eleven repeatedly praised the actions and the quick response of the officers. The officers are familiar with that clerk. That's their area of responsibility. They worked proactively there to address things and established a relationship with him in their contacts. The officers who were involved in the shooting are assigned to District 6, the station that's up there off of Colfax in Washington. Uh, the officer who fired his weapon has been on the police department for three years. Uh, the other officer also has been on the department for three years. Uh, the injured officer has been placed on administrative leave. He'll be put in an offline assignment while he heals and while the case is reviewed by the district attorney. So as in all of our officer-involved shootings, it's a combined investigation with our homicide unit and the Aurora Police Department homicide unit, the district attorney's office, and oversight by the independent monitor. So I'll take questions if you have them. So who started firing first? The suspect turned and fired first. Gotcha. Are you ready to identify the officer that was wounded? The officer who was wounded is Lloyd, or Travis Lloyd, L-L-O-Y-D. And what about his partner? Sean Drew, S-E-A-N. And then Drew, D R E W. The people who were hurt, where were they in relation to the actual shooting? Were they down by the slice work? Were they, where were they? So we did have a male who was inside slice works who was injured by the bullet graze, and we've determined that that was a ricochet from one of the officer's rounds. It uh, bounced off a building, and because of the trajectory path that, that appears that it came through, it went through the window and nicked the side of his neck and then struck the TV. The woman who was injured was standing back behind the officer when the shooting started, and we've, at this point, we believe that her injury was caused by the suspect's rounds. She was shot as well? Yes. Do you know where she was shot? It was in the leg. Which one was um, injured more? You said one of them had to be hospitalized. So the, the lady with the injury to her leg, she's the one that required hospitalization. The one shot by the suspect? Yes. So the suspect walked out with the entire cash register? Oh, the drawer. The drawer. The big square drawer. Yeah. Had police ever seen this suspect before? It sounds like they were Those two officers were not familiar with him. Okay. Does he have any record? He does have a criminal record. What do you know with that record? Yeah, it's available to you through the normal record request. 
you know how many shots were fired in total? Uh, we're not going to give that out right now. Can you shed any light on these protocols when you have a situation like this where officers also have to return fire in such a crowded place with so many people and so many cars going? What, right. what can you talk about? It's one of those situations that I think it's really important to note that the time frame that this took place in, the whole thing was 10 seconds. The officers get out of the car, the clerk's saying, there he goes, they're, at, they're running after him, and within four seconds, five seconds, the shots are exchanged, and it's over, it's done. Uh, the officers in this, their intent was to take him into custody, order him to the ground, and make him stop. He's the one who initiated the gunfight. He started, turned, started shooting at them. They were, then had to respond to that, and the best response at that point was to return fire. And yes, there were a lot of people there, we understand that. Uh, the suspect's actions forced our reaction. These, were they in a patrol car or a bike, were they bicycle cops? So they're bicycle officers normally, riding bicycles. They were in a patrol car that night, but they were wearing bicycle uniforms. So I think initially on scene, the, the information that you guys got was that he was a, they, they were bicycle mm -hmm. officers, which they are, but they were in a car. But they were in their bike uniform? Correct, which is a fully marked police uniform. They're, that's their area of responsibility, and they were driving, just driving down the street when he flagged them down. Do you know why they were in a car and not on their bicycle? I don't. The victim that was hit from the ricochet, is that something then the medical bills that Denver Police takes care of, or who takes care of, you know? I'm not clear on how that would work. I would assume that there would be some contact <coughs> that he could have with the city for help with that. Anything else? Do you have information on, on the, the citizen victims? This information as to I don't, I don't want to give that out. Um, Why is that? I haven't told them that we're going to give that out. If it may already be out there, but I would rather contact them and let them know we're going to give their name to the press. Okay. When the officer was hurting, uh, helping the one who was hurt, mm -hmm. how far away was the victim at that point? Was he just on the ground, or what was the? So when uh, the suspect started shooting, he was about three doors down, so it was about 100 feet maybe. And then the woman who was struck was behind the officer, uh, kind of in the mouth of the alley by the McDonald's. Okay. Thank you. All right. He started shooting in the middle of Polka. He's on the sidewalk. Okay, by McDonald's. So no, he's east of the McDonald's, <laughs> almost to Pearl. Okay. And did he say anything to officers before he started shooting? No. So they gave him the commands to stop. They they just began giving the commands when he turned and started shooting. Was body cam available? It's, we do have body cam. It's not going to be released right now. Okay, but it was active. Yes. Working. Yes. Is okay. the second officer in, on the administrative team as well? No. He's just back to normal. Control. Correct. And now does this case get passed over to the district attorney's office? Yes. The district attorney does a review, the final review of all officer-involved shootings, and then their letter comes out um, within two or three months. Okay.